If you're embarking on your first settlement in Against the Storm, you may know that there are a lot of things you have to think about when it comes to choosing a map. So, here are five things you should know before you start your settlement in Against the Storm. This guide, if you want to call it that, is geared towards new players and focuses on the early game. New players who may find it tough to get past the wall of knowledge experience players take for granted may find this video helpful. And if you do, leave a like. If you have something to add or correct, leave a comment. And also, subscribe. The first thing you should think about before you start a settlement is where you are going. That's not as simple as it sounds. It may seem right to place down your settlements where these numbers are biggest, but remember that your settlements have an ultimate goal the Ancient Seal you're targeting. You need to be able to reach it before the Blightstorm, and when you get there you need to be able to open it. At lower difficulty levels, acquiring enough Seal Fragments might be difficult through settlements alone, especially if you fail one, so keep your eyes open for map modifiers with the Royal Resupply effect. These can reward you with 5 Fragments if you need them, and if you don't, it can give you a one-time boost to your embarkation range to get you to your destination before the Blightstorm resets your progress. But be warned, Royal resupplies are given when you encamp near a negative modifier. For instance, this one would have me start a settlement with 6 impatience points. The decision as to whether to incur a debuff is one you will have to make yourself. Just don't forget that your ultimate goal is to reach and open the Ancient Seals. The second thing you have to think about before you start a settlement is what's in the trees. Tree resources are vital to your early game strategy, so you need to know what comes out of the forest you'll be mercilessly hacking down. While they'll always provide wood, the trees of each biome provide different secondary resources. For instance, the lush trees of the Royal Woodlands produce eggs, plant fibre and resin, resources you can usually utilise well in the early game, whereas the copper vein trees of the Scarlet Orchard have copper ore and pigment. Materials that have less use in the early years of your settlement but can be vital once you have more complex production in play. The mushwood trees of the marshlands will provide mushrooms as a food source, as well as leather. This can be used for fabric crafting early on, like plant fibre, but is also required for water skins, and the only way you'll really get leather naturally before you've unlocked the ranch blueprint. The dying trees of the cursed royal woodlands provide more food with insects and roots, and the coral forest is the most diverse, with the Crimson Reach, Muscle Sprout and Plate Leaf trees giving you a lot of options to diversify your build. Finally, the Abyssal trees of the Sealed Forest are the strangest, bearing creepy faces as well as meat, sea marrow and also leather. The third thing you need to think about before starting a settlement is fertile soil. Resource deposits run out. Farms do not. So, the amount of fertile soil tells you how many reliable resources you'll be able to produce. That's the short version. The long version is as follows. Fertile soil is found as these grassy tiles, over which farm fields may be placed. Then, you have the chance to unlock buildings that can utilise said farm fields. The small farm produces grain and vegetables. The plantation produces berries and plant fibre. The herb garden produces roots or herbs, and the forester's hut produces resin and crystallized dew. Now I should mention, the forester's hut isn't available till after a few citadel upgrades, so you'll have to work towards that. Farms work on a cycle. Crops are planted in the drizzle, and harvested in the clearance. The fields are unused during the storm, and if there are any unharvested crops in the fields when the storm starts, they will be destroyed. Fertile soil will net you reliable resources, so you'll want to utilise the fields if you have them, and they can also be used to get resources you may not be able to find. Fertile soil will give your settlements more options, and the more options you have, the easier it will be to adapt to the randomised nature of the game. The fourth thing you'll want to think about before starting a settlement is clay or stone. Okay, so this one might seem arbitrary at first glance, but it's an important distinction. Clay and stone are actually fairly interchangeable. Almost all recipes that use clay can use stone, such as bricks, which you will need for complex construction. So why then am I bothering to make a distinction? Well, it's because there's one thing that clay can do that stone can't. Pottery. Many complex food productions require some means of storing that food, either in pottery, barrels, or water skins. Now, barrels need some kind of metal, either copper bars or crystallized dew, which will complicate your logistics. Water skins need leather, 
which can be difficult to come across early on, and is only found in the trees of the sealed forest or the marshlands, and can only be produced at the ranch, which requires several upgrades at the citadel to unlock. So early on, pottery is the most reliable and convenient means of getting complex food production going in your settlement. And it needs clay. Getting complex food production going should be one of your first goals, and the presence of clay for pottery makes this goal much easier to obtain. Without the clay pit, which you don't unlock until much later on, you'll need to extract it from clay deposits. Of course, stone has its own uses, being an easy way to break open abandoned caches for the goodies inside. Either way, the presence of clay or stone in your settlement will heavily impact the direction of your settlement. You'll find clay in the Royal Woodlands, the Cursed Royal Woodlands and the Sealed Forest, while stone will be found in the Coral Forest and the Scarlet Orchard. The marshlands get a bonus as both clay and stone can be found here. The fifth thing you'll need to think about before starting your settlement are your fuel sources. The hearth must be fed fuel, as must several other recipes like pottery, most complex foods, and certain glade events. So you'll need to know what sort of fuel you'll be extracting. Wood is the most abundant, exists on every biome, and is the one you want to avoid burning. Wood has too many uses, it's very limiting to burn it, unless you have no other choice. Better would be sea marrow. Sea marrow burns for 40 seconds and has comparatively fewer other uses, so it can be burned with abandon. Its only downside is that it cannot be produced, only extracted, and it's possible you may not come across it at all. Coal is more complex, it burns for 40 seconds like sea marrow, but it can be extracted as a raw resource using a mine, or produced at the kiln. Converting wood into coal at the kiln, and then burning that at the hearth is far more efficient than burning wood directly. Finally, there's oil, the opposite of sea marrow if you like. It can only be produced at the press, and it's best if you have some farms to provide the raw resources reliably. It burns one every 25 seconds at the hearth. It's not really worth worrying about until you're some way into your settlement. Burn it if you got it, but I wouldn't start a settlement with my heart set on oil production. As raw resources, sea marrow can be found in the Royal Woodlands, the Cursed Royal Woodlands, the Scarlet Orchard, and the Sealed Forest. Coal can be found in the Coral Forest, and the Marshlands. Remember to set your fuel priorities at the hearth, keeping wood as the lowest. Finally, there's sacrificing. All primary fuels can be sacrificed at the hearth at a certain amount per minute for short-term benefits. Wood and coal reduce forest hostility by a substantial margin and can mean the difference between losing a villager and retaining them during a storm, while sacrificing oil will increase global production speed. Sacrificing sea marrow increases glade event working speed. While this is by no means a useless effect, it is in my opinion probably the least impressive of the four. So keep in mind what fuel sources you're likely to be utilizing before you start your settlement. So there, those are the five things I would consider the most important elements to worry about. Where you're going, what tree resources you're going to be getting, how much fertile soil you're likely to have and what you may use it on, the presence of clay or stone, and your fuel sources. Obviously, there are other things to consider as well, for instance, your starting species, but the species of Against the Storm probably deserve their own more in-depth analysis. And any plan you make before starting a settlement is going to be subject to change once the settlement actually gets going. However, hopefully this will help point you in the right direction so you know what to look out for before you do actually get into it.